So the stock market is full of different companies and stocks that you can buy. However, how do you know where to begin? Which stocks should you add to your portfolio right now? Well, that's what I'm gonna talk about in this video. Four stocks that you absolutely need to check out right now and buy May of 2024. Hey guys, Corey here. Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time, be sure to subscribe and tap that bell so you know when I post new videos. And if you're feeling generous, you can give me a thumbs up as it greatly helps the channel. You can also join my free newsletter link in the information box below as well as right there on the screen and the first 100 people that sign up are going to get trade alerts weekly delivered right to their inbox for free in addition to all the free content that i'll be sending you tips and trading as well as strategies right to your email you also can join right below this video my exclusive membership to support the channel and become an exclusive member of invest with Corey. so we've been making some good money this week i saw your guys's comments you've been telling me how you made money on my upstart trades hymns palance here as well as soundhound so a high five you guys are doing awesome and i'm glad that you've been enjoying the videos and that my trades are working out for you i did tell you soundhound and upstart specifically we're going to rebound and things were going to work out just fine so fine palance here are looking good let's get right onto the video guys first i want to point out that i'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice i'm just here to show you guys strategies technicals fundamentals financial and give you my overall strategy in the market. However, it's up to you to decide which stocks you want to invest your money into and how much of a position that you guys want to have in that said stock as it's your money. So let's talk about the top four stocks that you guys need to look at and buy for May of 2024. This list is not in any particular order and has nothing to do with the price of the stock. I am just organizing this list from four to one, one just being the most important and most definite buy of the list but it's not based on the stock's price. So I've done technicals and fundamentals as well as financials on these companies. And that's what allowed me to decide which ones were the absolute best for this month and the ones that just stood out and that are an absolute steal right now. They're a bargain. And it's very important for you to pay attention to these top four stocks because they're the ones that you're gonna wanna get into and time is running out because when the price starts going back up, the discount to get into these stocks is gonna dissipate. It's gonna be gone and you won't be able to get the discount anymore. So the number four stock for May of 2024, Robinhood or Hood as the ticker symbol. This stock right now is at a buy. They've beaten the earnings by a good amount, two quarters in a row. In fact, the price is almost near the 52 week high. It actually was at $20 in the recent earnings. The previous earnings back in February also beat and that is where Robinhood started going up to $14, $15. Prior to that, it traded between $7 and $12. Now Robinhood is a serious contender in the fintech space with their new offerings of the exclusive gold credit card for gold members and also their 8% margin rate for gold members. And they also have the 5% interest on your brokerage cash that's uninvested. They pioneered commission-free trading. They're the biggest advocate for commission-free trading. And that's another big asset of Robinhood. Robinhood has the best interface or UI, user interface, of any brokerage out there. The only one that comes even close is Webull, and it's really not even close. It's more technical uh, if you want to really get into the trading and the algorithms and the graphs and the charts and really look at the order flow and order books and stuff like that. But if you're looking at long-term investing, swing trading, which is a lot of the stuff that I do, unless you're really a day trader and a scalper, Robinhood is so good for beginners. They are really, they're the pioneer of commission-free trading, but as well as friendly and easy user interface for beginners. And of course, the APY in your margin brokerage. It's a much more intuitive and easy to use app. Let's go ahead and take a look at the financials and explain to you guys why Robinhood is an all-time buy right now. So if we look at the previous earnings, things weren't too good in November of 23. They were in the negative and the earnings before that, they were barely positive. So last two quarters of 2023 were not, were not that good. They just really weren't. However, However, in February 24, they went up to three cents, which is pretty much similar or the same as their quarter two of 2023. However, the most recent earnings was 18 cents. This was the breakout in profitability that we needed. And we can see in the earnings right here, the price didn't change much. And anytime we see something like this happen, which where the price doesn't really move up and down very much at all, even though they beat the earnings, we had a lot of selling pressure which 
which was panic. And when those people started to sell, the algorithmic trading started selling to the AI bots would start selling. And that's what happened. And it was a sell-off just like Palantir. But it makes no sense because Robinhood is going in this direction. Believe me, I've told you guys what was going to happen with Soundhound, Palantir. I told you what happened with SoFi most recently with Upstart and Hymns, as well as Rivian. They all did what I said they would do. They all beat the earnings. I was relatively in the ballpark on all of them. And a few of them was pretty spot on. If I was to estimate where I think Robinhood's going to go, I would say by midsummer in the next earnings, we're going to be up around $22. It could come down a bit, work its way down, then back up. If the next earnings is as good as this one was or better, like I said, we're going to end up somewhere up here. That's where I see Robinhood going somewhere in this direction like this, maybe more of a zigzag, but that's where we're headed with Robinhood. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the financials. We're going to go over the statements. We're going to look at income statement, total revenue from 481 to 624 million. That's good. Gross profits from 441 to 583. That's good. Operating income, 32 to 164. That's really good. That is great. It's beautiful. Like the Italians say, buena. Pre-tax income from 29 million to 162. That is like a very, very beautiful site right there. Net income, 30 million to 157 million. That again, awesome. EBITDA from 49 to 181. This is incredible growth. Absolutely mind-blowing earnings. In fact, their earnings was as good, if not better than Palantir. Now, let's look at the balance sheet. Total assets, 46 billion up from 32. Liabilities up to 39 billion from 25. 5 billion total equity from 6.7 to 6.89 then we look at total debt 5 billion to 6 billion so their debt increased a little bit but their total assets did as well now even though their total debt is up from 5 billion to 6 billion their net debt went from negative 1.24 billion to negative 404 million that means they're in the positive they were sitting on 1.2 billion in cash now they're sitting on half a billion or 400 million to be exact which means their debt has went up and that's not necessarily a good thing but they're still profitable and they're still sitting on cash. Let's look at my favorite cash flow. So cash from operating activities is more in the negative from negative 29 to negative 800. This is not good. Cash from investing activities from negative 3 million to negative 47 million. They purchased investments, but also sold the maturity of investments. What they purchased exceeded what they sold. No big deal there, depending on what it was. So issuance and retirement of short-term debt, 685 million. So they went more into debt by $300 million. Not exactly sure as I haven't looked at their balance sheet yet. Free cash flow down from negative 35 million to negative 809 million. Now, that's still better than the quarter before the last one. However, I don't know what's changed since quarter 423 to quarter 124, but they are definitely not as cash flow positive and their operational activities hasn't generated them as much cash. Their revenue and their profits are growing, but their cash flow isn't, which means they're owed money and they owe money and they have debts going on, but they're more profitable. So they need to manage this a little bit better, but without getting too deep into it, overall healthy, it's still healthy, but they've got to fix the cash flow problem. They're owed money and they're, they got debt, um, but they are sitting on cash. So they're still in good shape. Their income is still 624 million. Number three on this list, Starbucks. Starbucks is a big name. Everyone knows it. They're worldwide. The largest coffee brand in the world. And they've been pretty profitable and, and some quarters extremely profitable, but the previous quarter, they missed the earnings pretty badly. And a lot of people sold off and it brought Starbucks down to a a $72 price target. In fact, it was such a bargain. I couldn't even start filming this video and the price went back to 75. If you can get into Starbucks under $78 or under $80 even, it's a buy. The dividends in their own right are really good and worth it. And long-term, I expect Starbucks to turn profits again and their next two earnings should be better. And based on the technicals and fundamentals and my research, Starbucks is an absolute buy in the $70 price range. So you can see here how they missed earnings and the price just slid. People started selling, algorithmic trading kicked in and everything just slid. Then people started panicking more Then the algorithmic bots started selling more and it didn't end. But now it's back up. We're back up to 75. I see Starbucks recovering somewhat in this fashion. It'll come down a little bit. Maybe it'll come down a little more like this, but then it's going to come back up. I see a price target of somewhere in the 80 to 85 range by end of summer. It's going to be hard to fill this really nasty red candle and all this red volume. And even though 
all this green volume is right here. The price did not move. You can see both areas did not move at all. So there was a lot of selling pressure. However, I believe Starbucks to be a buy. I really do. Starbucks is an absolute buy right now. They missed the last two quarters, but the outlook for quarter two, 2024 is bright. You can see 96 cents a share up from 80 cents and up from 90 cents. So if they match or beat the next earnings in July, it will be their strongest quarter since November of 2023. So I fully believe on my estimates that we're going to end up back in the mid 80s, low to mid 80s by the next earnings, and it's going to jump and we are going to be back where we need to be. And maybe on the third quarter results, we can be back over 93 or $94. Starbucks is an absolute buy at this point. I would not waste any time getting into Starbucks. So let's look at the income statement of Starbucks here. Total revenue, $8 billion or $8.56 down from 942. Not that bad. Gross profit, $1.68 billion down from 2.07. So negative 3%, 1% respectfully or 1.8%. Operational income from $1.42 billion down to $1.03. Still not bad, just a decline from the previous quarter. Pre-tax income, $992 million, just under a billion versus $1.3 billion of the previous quarter. Net income, $772 million versus $1.02 billion on the previous quarter. EBITDA, down from $1.8 billion to $1.43 billion. So a slide, not a very big one though. Total assets, $29 billion, pretty much the same as the previous quarter and the one before it. Total liabilities, pretty much the same. Their assets and liabilities haven't changed much. However, their net debt has went up a billion dollars and they're still in net debt. And they've been in a lot of net debt and their total debt has went up as well. So I want to explain something that I'm not sure if anyone has explained it yet, but this is part of the reason why Starbucks is having a little bit of trouble, especially short term, and they expect it to get better by summer. But this is the reason why a lot of people sold Starbucks. 506 million from their operational activities down from 2.38 billion, which sent them into a negative cash position of negative 153 million down from 1.79 billion. However, financing activities much improved, significantly improved. Their cash for investing activities is 130 million more in the hole. A big problem that Starbucks is having is their capital expenditures and their capital expenditures, fixed assets. This is like milk, uh, supplies they need like milk, creamers, coffee beans, stuff like that. Because of the pandemic and the inflation, these capital expenditures, the things that they need are expensive and they're paying more for them. So this is growing when it should be staying the same or slowly growing or shrinking, but it's growing a lot. And it's due to inflation. This is hurting the business. If they could cut 200 million out of that, it would make them cash flow positive. So just inflation getting better will put them back into a positive cash flow. Also, people are cutting back, drinking coffee and going out. McDonald's suffered too. That will put this number back up. And with the summertime, people go out, they get ice cream, they get cold drinks, which Starbucks offers. And people still love coffee. And I think with summer coming around and, you know, inflation maybe staying the same and slightly leveling off and things getting better, possibly, um, it'll help them even more. With summer around the corner and their next earnings, I project that they are going to meet or beat the next earnings, which is going to send them right back up. So Starbucks, absolute buy. The next stock I want to talk about, number two, Shopify. Shopify just had an earnings call and it did not go well for the stock price, but they beat the earnings and the stock price slid. This is an absolute bargain because of people's expectations just so high. The bar is so high that when Shopify delivered good earnings results, but it wasn't as high as the expectation, it slid and the algorithmic bot trading kicked in and it just slid even more. Shopify was at $85 or $83 just a few months back at the previous earnings. It's now at $62 and is an absolute steal and discount. So for the e-commerce world, building your own online storefront, it's really three big players. Amazon, which is not really your own website. eBay, same thing. And then if you want your own .com with your own e-commerce that you're in full control of, it's Wix versus Shopify. And Shopify is overall the better platform and is easier to use and easier to integrate and more people use it. Let's look at the chart and their fundamentals, technicals, financials, and let's go over the earnings. And this is an absolute buy. So you can see the earnings was an absolute win. They estimated 17 cents EPS and we got almost 21 cents, 17% increase and a 1.48% increase in revenue. Yet the price still slid due to expectations. On this stock, it's hard to say exactly, but it's going to level off here, something like this, and then it's going to start coming back up. And if they meet or beat the next earnings, we're going to be back up here somewhere. Either way, long term, absolute steal, in my opinion. I don't see Shopify getting much below. I think the floor right now for Shopify is 
$2. I think that's like really the floor. I just don't see it going below that. So you could hold out a little bit longer if you want, but you might miss it. It's really hard to time the bottom. This is the time to buy. Let's look at the financials. We see 20 cents. They're expected to go to 21 cents. If they go to 30 cents in July, this stock is going to go up. It's going to be crazy. We look at the balance statement. Total revenue down a little bit from 2.2 to 1.8 billion. Operational income 204 to 136 million. Pre-tax income, they're negative. They've got more debts and more expenditures. That's not good. Um, Non-operational income has also went down. That's not good. Net income, not very good, which is why the sell-off happened, but their EBITDA is still good. Let's go over to their balance sheet. Assets, still the same. Liabilities, the same. Equity, relatively nearly identical. Total debt, the same. They're sitting on $4 billion in cash. So financially, they're good. They have $4 billion in cash. Let's look at cash flow. $457 million to $236 million. However, cash from investing activities went from negative $354 to negative $26. Cash from financing activities down from $17 to $3 million. They're still free cash flow positive from $455 million to $230 million. And they're sitting on $4 billion in cash. Absolute buy. Shopify is a buy. There is no way, no way I'd pass this up. It might go down a little bit more. It could go down to $59 or $58. It could dip, but it also could go up. Relative I think now we're at the low. I think now's the time to buy. You can't you can't buy on the floor. You're never going to time it. So if you buy now and the stock goes up a bit, starts to come down, wait for it to level off again, buy more. Dollar cost average, when it goes up, you start making a killing. And you can sell covered calls. And on Shopify, it's really good. The premiums are good. If I was to sell a $64 call right now, it'd be like $90 a week. So really good premium. Shopify, 100% buy. So my number one pick, and not based on price, to get into right now, and I've fought Followed it very closely for the last six months, and that is Lyft. Lyft is an absolute buy right now. They have crushed and annihilated the past two earnings. They now have a new CEO who has come over from Amazon and used to work for Microsoft. Very good CEO, and he's turning the company around. This is the time to buy. I would try to get into Lyft in the $16 range. I have 400 shares in my big brokerage, and I have 200 shares in my small brokerage, and I'm going to be adding to that position the moment that lift breaks below $17. If it hits $16.90, I'm in. If it ends up falling a little more to $16.50, I will add to the position even more. Like I said, you can't time the bottom, but somewhere in the 15s, high 15s to low 16s is the floor. So we're only a dollar away from the floor. Lift is a buy. Let's go over the technicals, fundamentals, and I'm going to show you guys why it's a buy. So let's look at Lift long-term. Lift was a pretty horrible stock a year or two ago. It, it really was. And you guys will see they spent a lot of time down here in the $10 range. They missed the earnings here. They barely beat these earnings. Things were really rough. Things changed in the last two earnings, specifically in the previous earnings, where they were finally profitable. You can see November 2023's results of 24 cents EPS up 57%. You can see there was about a two-week delay in the move on Lyft. However, it went up, came back down, and settled about halfway. It was like a halfway pullback. Then the next earnings, they beat and crushed it, came up. Halfway was a pullback, then it went back up. Then this earnings, we went up, we're pulling back to the halfway point. So it seems like there's a lot of support in the 1680, 1690 range and a lot more support right at $16. So that is the floor. We're only a dollar away. I see Lyft starting to move its way up. If I was to guess where I think Lyft's going to go, I think it's going to stay in between like this for a little bit, make a move up, come back down and right at the next earnings, it's just going to jump up. I think we're going to make it to $21, $22 by summer. The reason I believe this is because everyone knows that Lyft has beaten the previous two earnings by crushing it. So it's going to happen again. Right now, Lyft is a buy. There's been a lot of stability in the $17 range. And I believe Lyft eventually is going to make its way to $25, $30, $40. This is a very good stock and pretty stable. So total revenue from $1 billion to $116, $122 to $128. Constant growth. Gross profit, $394, $378, $418. They're up again on gross profit. So their operation income is a little low, negative $62 million, about the same as the previous quarter. They said they were working on that. Pre-tax income, negative $28 million. Net income income negative 31 million. EBITDA also negative 30. This is not a big deal because of the cash flow. Let's look at their balance sheet and cash flow. Total assets up from 456 to 476 billion. Liabilities up from 4 billion to 427. We got total equity 541 to 491, relatively the same but it declined by 50 million.
million. Total debt, 1.1 billion. Their net debt, negative 555 million. That means they're sitting on half a billion in cash. Lyft has 555 million in cash. So they're not in the negative. Very good. Let's look at cash flow. Cash from operational activities from the previous earnings, which was really good, 43 million up to 168 million. This is a massive growth. Cash from investing activities, negative 107 and negative 242. And this is mainly because of capital expenditures and the purchase of investments. Cash from financing activities from negative 16 to negative 44 million. Free cash flow from 14 million to 139 million. They're sitting on half a billion in cash and they're cash flow positive. The reason they don't have a net profit is because they're putting their money back into the business. The reason why it's a buy is because even though they don't have a net profit, they're sitting on 555 million in cash and they're cash flow positive of $139 million. Remember, cash flow is more important than profit and loss. The best way to evaluate a company's financials and balance sheet is cash flow. They're positive in the cash flow and they're positive with no debt with 555 million. So instead of paying themselves, they're using their sources of money to keep the business afloat and to increase revenue. And that is clearly evident by their 15 cent EPS versus the estimate of seven. Their previous earnings was 19. So a little off from the previous earnings, but an increase everywhere else nonetheless. Lyft, absolute buy right now. These are the top four picks, in my opinion, for May of 2024. Now, they're not my personal top four or top five picks, which I've got a video coming out on that really soon. But these are the stocks that you absolutely can't pass up on for May of 24 because of how cheap they are. They are a bargain and you can get so much juicy premium from them. Lyft, Robinhood, Starbucks and Shopify. The best four stocks of May 2024. Thanks so much for being here, guys. Be sure to subscribe and tap the bell if you enjoy the channel and give me a thumbs up if you guys are feeling generous as it really does help the channel grow. And be sure to sign up for the free newsletter right there links on the screen and below in the information box free trade alerts to the first 100 people that sign up and not only that tips as well as strategies delivered right to your email box every week and you can email me and talk with me you can also join the premium membership right below this video there's a little join button if you want to support the channel and become an exclusive member of invest with Corey. but before you go anywhere guys high five we're making money this is the next video you guys want to watch right now right there that's the video on the screen to watch this is the one you've been waiting for. Click it. Guys are going to enjoy it. Let's grow our wealth together.